Hi again, I'm still Sue Johnson, and to my far right, that's still Norma Powell, and to her left, of course, is James McGilbray, and the star of this segment is our very own Peter Lawson Jones, who is here to talk about more of the fascinating forward-thinking uh, activities here at CARMU. He is Peter Lawson Jones, is not only a consummate actor, as we all know from the recent ceremonies in Dark Old Men, which has been extended to this, well, by the time this airs, it'll be over, but this Sunday, March 3rd, uh, they added an, 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 a, a performance because they had to turn away folks from yeah, we, we earlier. Turned, we turned away last Sunday, which was supposed to be our closing, closing. night performance. Uh -huh. We turned away about three dozen people. Good heavens of my yeah, um, It was yeah, a great was feeling, wonderful. but uh, those of us in the cast felt very bad about that. We wanted to make sure that everybody had the <laughs> ceremonies and dark old man experience, yes. and so yes. we voted unanimously to, to, to have, uh, have one more performance in. Yeah. So we're excited about very being able to extend it and making sure there's many people who want to see the play and could see the play will be able to do Wonderful. so. And mm -hmm. you have become, I said consummate actor, you have skyrocketed in the past two years in your performing artist career as a stage actor and a film actor. In fact, did you and James work together on one of the film? Uh, we, I think it was the first film that I may have ever been involved in, a short film that was done by the professor from University of Virginia. Yes, that was based on Cotton Comes to Harlem. Cotton Comes to Harlem, yes. kind of interesting take on, yeah. on, the, on the movie. Yes. And I believe, if I'm not uh, incorrect, that that was actually screened at the at a new film festival in New York, I know that. Yeah, it was uh, screened at, I think it was screened at three different film festivals, really? including at Virginia. So you two have um, worked together off and on for a considerable period of time. And in fact, you remember way back when we were over at Time Warner, Adelphia? Absolutely. You did yes. a reading with Peter back then. And you know, we were talking the other day about how long we've known each other, and the more I think about it, we act you like figured we, it out? No, <laughs> but I know it's been many, it's been over 10 years now. Well, easily. Gradually, that. yeah. Easily that. Yeah. So you but you've become like a sister to me. Oh, yes, a much younger sister. <laughs> 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 the baby sister. The baby sister. <laughs> uh, yeah. So anyway, you've been working on your acting career, theater and film, and you're technically kind of a renaissance man because you do a lot of stuff ever since you left your political career, and right now, you're one of the key players at CARMU, and in your role as the founder of the CARMU Alumni Association, and also the chair of the Hall of Fame event, coming up June 15th, 14th? June 14th. 14th. It's the um, weekend, there's a series of activities during mm -hmm. the weekend of June 13th and 14th okay. this year. Uh, we're gonna start out with a VIP reception, which all the honorees will be present, and, and those who have been particularly supportive of the uh, weekend's events and have helped make it possible through their contributions and sponsorships. Uh, that evening here at Kiramu, we'll have an alumni event, a free of event for those who are Kiramu alums. And the only thing you have to do to qualify as a Kiramu alum is if performed or been backstage behind the scenes in one production. If you've been uh, employed at Caramu, you're eligible to become a member of the Caramu Alumni Association. Uh, and uh, certain volunteers can also be, um, uh, will be Caramu Alumni Association members. And uh, so we're very excited about that particular event. Um, I believe that is the closing weekend for a Color, color Purple. Color Purple, yes. And so, it's, it's, the play and then a reception after following that performance will be uh, dedicated to and there'll be special, will be a special event for alums. And then the following day we'll have something in the afternoon akin to inside the actor's studio yeah. Yeah. Yes. where a couple of our honorees who are performers will uh, tell their life story, tell how they became engaged in uh, and how they developed a passion for the performing arts then they'll field questions for those there, and then that evening will be the culminating event, the grand mm -hmm. finale, the ultimate event yeah. at the, <laughs> the Caribou Hall of Fame uh, dinner and induction ceremony. Good, good food. And there'll be great food, food and wonderful entertainment because that's also a key yes. component of the mm -hmm. evening. And I can tell you now that that event will be held 
June 14th, 6 o'clock p.m. at the Silver Grill mm -hmm. in downtown Cleveland, historic Silver Grill, which is a gorgeous, beautiful, we, uh, uh, historic venue. We all remember venue. that from the time we were little youngsters, when downtown was the place. Oh, what with May Company, Hickey's, Tally's, <laughs> yeah, my Stony mom used to go to Bonwit Teller. Bonwit Teller, yeah. 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 That, that era of Euclid Avenue. It was grand. Oh, yes. And grand. talk about Cleveland memories, like we have Caramu memories. Anybody who's been in Cleveland a number of years remembers that era. So the Silver Grill, and I'm not sure if that's Does where anybody Mr. remember Jingle the Minotaur was. Room? No, I don't remember that. Over at the Halleys, yeah, yeah. Not the Minotaur, the but Minotaur. I remember Mr. Jingling. I remember the you um, getting a fr frosty, and the frosty, a, and the a hot foot dog. Of, uh, yeah. We liked Grants a lot, but we get the frosty at the uh, foot of the escalator. Later, at the, the was that Higby's? Okay. Higby's? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So yeah, it goes back a ways. But yeah. so don't the forget the grill. Christmas tree at Sterling Linda Davis. Oh yeah, <laughs> that thing was monumental. Cleveland memories. Yeah, and yeah. it's a lot of fun too to go back into the day. You know, when Cleveland was. Um, Actually, it was one of the top twenty cities in the in the country. Well, well, one yeah. was number seven. It was number seven, seven. population. Yeah. Yeah. Nine hundred and thirty thousand, sometime between uh, nineteen twenty and uh, nineteen thirty. And at one point, we had yes. twenty. Uh, uh, what do you call that? The corporations, the top twenty. Uh, 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 Fortune five hundred. Fortune five hundred. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we we were there. So like Caramu, though, Cleveland is rebuilding. Caramu has some. Wonderful things in the wings and on stage. And well, this is an exciting time for Caribou because its centennial year of operation uh, starts in April, yes. or two months, and um, so there are there will be a bevy and host of events that will uh, celebrate Caribou and its legacy. The Caribou Hall of Fame induction ceremony and dinner 2014 that weekend is kind of the kickoff yes. for the um, centennial celebration for Caribou. It'll be the first significant event in a series of events. Yes. So the events will run uh, through 2014 and 15. Because it'll be in April, I think it's April 15th or so, and a date like that, 2015, at least in April 2015, that will be the actual, actual 100th year. The, 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 uh, that Are you bringing in the Russell year. and Rowena Jalif? Better than that. <laughs> if we do, then we'll have a standing room only. Uh, just so the, the uh, viewing audience will know, Russell and Rowena Jellif were the founders of Caribou way back in 1915. Well, and we certainly hope to have their mm -hmm. their son Roger mm -hmm. and oh, his daughters. Oh, oh yes. okay. I didn't know that. Roger yeah, was Amy, pre Roger was present for the uh, the initial the Caribou initial. Hall of Fame celebration yes. in 2006. Okay. Well, um, now, yes. in terms of Let's back up for just a bit. There was a reason for you to um, initiate this organization, the, the Alumni Association. What was your original thought as to why you felt the need to do it in the first place, and what do you hope the uh, association evolves into? In other words, what its purpose is going to be going forward? Well, ultimately, what we seek to achieve through reestablishing Caribou Alumni Association, because there have been Caribou there Alumni been, Associations yes, in the was. past yeah. on both the East Coast and the West Coast, in New York right. and in L.A. And what we hope to do through what's always been the intention and the plan and the intent of the Caribou Hall of Fame uh, ceremony, induction ceremony and dinner, is to restore Caribou to the place that it occupied in the pantheon of, of theaters uh, 30 and 40 years ago when the reputation was global, when performers from Caramu left here and became stars in New York and L.A. And Norm is fond of, of telling the story. We love to hear it about how Caramu actors would go to New York and go to L.A. and, and be the ones that got all the roles. Yes. And, and, and the would, other would become the envy. From, yes, the other actors, of, of they the said, oh, here comes some Caramu. We won't get the part. The Caramu people are here, and yeah. the Caramu people got the parts. Well, oh. speaking of Cleveland memories, there are Caramu memories for those who go back for a minute. And one of the things we're trying to do is move forward and not always talk about the past, but Caramu is known for its years, and you can speak to this, with the folks like Ron O'Neill, Minnie Gentry, Al Fan, Nate Barnett, Robert Guillaume, Clayton, Clayton, Clayton Corbin, Corbin. Uh, Robert Guillaume, Minnie Gentry, oh, Minnie Minnie Gentry. Minnie. and even my Charlie cousin Brown. was here, um, Charlie Brown, Charlie Brown, Bill yeah. Cobbs, Bill Cobbs, and even my cousin was way back. 
Jane Isabel Cooley. Yes, yes. I forget uh, the Davises. Which Davises? Ozzy. Oh, Bro Ruby and Ozzy. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, well, actually, interestingly enough, uh, Ruby Dee originally was born in Cleveland, Cleveland but never yes. had the opportunity to perform at Carroll. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Nor nor did nor did her husband Ozzy Davis. Ozzie, yeah. but but, had, I'm sorry. Go ahead. But but still, what they did was bring attention right. uh, to the city of Cleveland. They came back to Carroll at different occasions, you know, and, and did events for us, uh, publicity type things. They did. Well, and there they was a recently a portrait that, of her, uh, Ruby Dee. Well, it there's a mural on that's the. On, the yeah. Building on the East 89th Street side, right at the corner of Quincy. Quincy. Yes, who commissioned? There was somebody. Sankofa. Sankofa Fine Art, and was there a particular artist from there? Uh, you know, I'm drawing, oh, a, I'm drawing a, frankly a blank on his name, too, but yeah. he is a, a world renowned muralist. Yes. Who has done murals throughout the, the nation mm -hmm. and uh, is extraordinarily successful. Fascinating man. He had to, he, came, he was actually here for the unveiling like, yes. of the mural. And, and I uh, missed that event, of all events, I missed that one. Well, yeah. one, one more question, that um, when you think about alumni, obviously the reason for alumni associations is to tie people together in terms of having them feel a part of an organization. That's why there are alumni associations at universities, and ultimately they give back to their universities. And what I found interesting about this alumni association is you didn't have to have had have starring and leading roles. It's if you have participated in helping this organization, you are an alumni. If you were instructor here, if you were on staff, if you participated in, 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 a, in a, even a single production, whether on stage or behind the scenes, and you, you make an interesting point because what we want, number one, we want to build that network yes. of alums. Because that network can be supportive of young performers who come out of Caribou, who might go to L.A. and Brooklyn uh, or, or New York, and they'll have family, yes. so exactly. to speak. There, because we always were very, very, and we still are very close. Very well, close not only there. that, I want to add to. I noticed that we're still. But there's saying, another purpose, and we'll return yeah, to that. Um, that we're still saying that a, a local actor has, you know, goes to New York or L.A. or you know Chicago or something like that. I still plan to live long enough for Cleveland to be a place for working actors to receive, to achieve a level of stardom or working income. And it's starting to happen because yeah. I'm earning pretty good income as well, an okay. actor yeah. here now. And now enough the so film that I was able state, to give up yes. some days at my day job because yeah. I've replaced that income. So it's beginning to it's happen. Beginning to happen. Certainly through yeah. the efforts of the Greater Cleveland Film Commission. Yes. And, and when you have theaters, like Caramu and certainly like Cleveland Playhouse and Great Lakes uh, Theater and Playhouse Square, uh, there, there are ample opportunities. So at least we are in the process of developing more and more opportunities so that those, again, whether you're an actor uh, or, or if you are a technician, there will be opportunities for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Whether cast Involved in the performing arts. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, you mentioned there was a second purpose. Sure. Uh, the uh, one of the primary purposes of the Alumni Association is to give back to Carroll. That's right. Uh, already alums have offered to conduct free workshops uh, in various fields. Uh, it, it is our intention to at some point be able to generate enough revenue so that we can pay for young boys and girls in the neighborhood who wish to take classes at Caramu, that though they, they'll have uh, scholarship, so to speak, and that their fees can be subsidized by the Alumni Association. It is a long-range goal for the Alumni Association to at some point be able to offer scholarships to um, institutions of higher learning for those that want to pursue the performing arts. Right. So we have a significant agenda, but we also want to be able to provide volunteers for various events at Carroll to help generate uh, revenue uh, that can go towards the theater, because that is the focus of the Caribou Alumni Association, is the, the theatrical offerings here. We want to be in a position that if, uh, if a certain uh, instrument is needed, we can provide it. If we need a new curtain, we can provide it uh, through, the, through the Alumni Association and it's, uh, through its wherewithal. So uh, th those are the ultimate aspirations of the Okay, How does one go about formalizing one's association uh, as that's a, a great that's a great question. Um, 
there's going to be kind of almost two levels of membership. Uh, those who will become dues-paying members will be entitled to certain discounts when it comes to Caramu sponsored events mm. and plays. And uh, even, for example, the Caramu Alumni Association, if by, by the, uh, I'm sorry, the Caramu uh, Hall of Fame event, by the time it takes place in June, we will have implemented a dues structure so that those who have become dues-paying members will be able to enjoy a discount. Uh, Wasn't there we'll, uh, a discount offered to Caramu alums to see ceremonies in Dark Old Men? And uh, several other plays. Yes. yes. Uh, and so there will be, and, and so that, but that's another kind of level of benefit. Mm -hmm. You will ne not necessarily have to be a dues-paying member to be able to take advantage of the, the, the discounted ticket uh, nights for Caramu alums. But in order to enjoy uh, those larger benefits, which might include uh, free caribou cup or cap or some kind of paraphernalia, you'll have to become dues-paying dues members. members. And the reason we're, but, but the dues we're requesting, the dues be paid, so that we can be real, genuine uh, partners yes. with caribou in helping it subsidize uh, many of its operations here, particularly in the theater, and to help pay for some capital improvements relative to the theater. Nice. So that's, 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 that's the objective. And to find out more about the Caribou uh, Alumni Association and the uh, Caribou Hall of Fame benefit celebration, what are the contact phone numbers, emails, websites for folks who want to find out more about how they can participate? Well, the quickest way to find out is just emailing me at peterlawsonjones at gmail.com. Okay, we'll my have first, that my screen. middle, my last name, <laughs> yes. Jones at gmail And there's nobody in the next 15 states who don't know your name. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 you know, I, I'd like to flatter myself to think that, but I know better. <laughs> the other thing is you can always call Carol because the administration, uh, the new interim executive director and the staff are very supportive of the mm -hmm. efforts, both in terms of building the Caramu Alumni Association and certainly in supporting the Caramu uh, Hall of Fame induction ceremony uh, and dinner weekend because that is going to be a major fundraiser. Yeah. As a matter of fact, the previous iterations of that fundraiser have been the biggest money makers in Caramu's history. I yes. think the three that were held between 2006 and 2008 uh, netted, not grossed, but netted approximately uh, hundred, over $150,000, $160,000. Yes. And so we anticipate that this one is going to be the best yet. And I should point out that one of the, our featured inductee in the National Living Legend category is uh, Essipatha Merkerson, who uh, performed at Caramu under Mike Malone's direction over 30 years ago. Uh, the name of the piece, to, the uh, his, uh, his eyes were watching God, I can't remember, it had, it had uh, the, There is the a name, place, eyes something like the eyes, you're right here watching God? Or watching I, God, I, I something like that. I don't know if it was that, that but, yeah. but she, she performed in this, and of course we all know her from playing uh, Lieutenant Anita Van Buren on the Law second longest order. running yeah. uh, TV series, dramatic TV series ever, Law and Order. And of course she was in Lincoln in a very interesting cameo role in Lackawanna Blues. And she had a, a show herself called Finding Our Missing mm -hmm. on TV One. Yes, so she yes. is a well-known personality. We're very excited that she will be joining us and headlining this dinner. But there are other on There'll be other honorees in other categories. Uh, yes. A local living legend and national legend posthumous and local legend posthumous and fine arts fine to arts. cover those who aren't uh, necessarily performers in the traditional sense of the word, but might have been stage managers or directors or mm -hmm. choreographers. Yes, administrators. Uh, and, and we have an administrators category and we have a, a benefactors category benefactors. and we have a rising star category to honor uh, the young men and women who are 35 and under. Okay. You know, so you're, oh, that's so me. the two of you. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's me. That was the two us. of you. That's right the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Our one rising star uh, that we got her had her own TV show. Uh, Imani, Imani, Imani Hakeem, Hakeem. Hakeem. Oh, yes. on Everybody Hates Chris. Everybody hates Chris. Yes, and, and she's been she on a couple others too. The Gabby too. Douglas special. The Gabby, okay. the Gabby oh, Douglas story. Oh, the, 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 the Congress the, the, Olymp no, the Olympic, oh, the Olympic uh, yeah. gymnast, that, that was on a gold, gold, winning, right. Right. gold medal right. winning right. Olympic gymnast. So we, we, we made her the rising and star. And S.A. Pedro Merkinson was in that as well, I believe. Uh -huh. I 
when she was in that. So we made her the rising star, and that's just what happened to her. She became a rising, rising star. star. <laughs> and now she's almost an established yes, yes. star. Uh -huh. Well, listen, we're going to wrap up this part of the interview. Uh, but before you go, just stay here, because you may contribute. Uh, one of the things that we do here at the Wake Up and Live's Actors Studio through our show here, Wake Up and Live with the Arts, uh, we like to help promote uh, community events that are important to the greater Cleveland community, and not necessarily just the arts, but I do want to talk about uh, one of the artistic events going on uh, at Rainey Institute. Now, we also tape our show at Rainey Institute, where Lee Lazar is the executive director and Beverly Brown is the associate director, and we tape our show there, so part of our role is to help them, like we're helping care promote uh, their special events. And they have a special production called These Walls Don't Talk. And it's an original piece written uh, and performed by various uh, Rainey Institute staff, students, etc. And it was written and directed by Laura Persons. And this performance will be on stage Friday, March 21st at 5.30 and Saturday, March 22nd at 7 p.m. And you really need to go see the Rainey building. It is a wonderful theatrical yes, performance yes, space and what it does for youth and young people in arts, education, and culture, uh, they are phenomenal. Yes, they they are. are phenomenal. And they make me think of perhaps you know, Caribou and them someday with their youth drama and all, maybe, you know, someday there will be... Well, I think they're, they're I think Caribou, again, I, I see mm -hmm. this as a new era, Caribou. Yes. And I see Caribou taking advantage of collaborations with other arts and cultural institutions yes. uh, throughout this community. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this is a, this, this is a unique opportunity because you only celebrate a hundredth anniversary of Centennial once. Once. That's it. Yes, right? that's and it. so <laughs> it is the intention. I see a staff and I see a board of uh, trustees mm -hmm. that is absolutely dedicated to exploiting this opportunity and creating the kind of minimum, momentum that will carry Caramu forward in the future and, again, help restore it. Oh, yes. to the place that it occupied for so many years. As a I think we can't settle it for anything yeah. other than that. That's right. right. And one last announcement, which is going to uh, segue into what you want to talk about, and, I, and Bill Cobbs is uh, associated with, and Lester will put this up on the screen, this flyer, uh, Dr. Charles Maudlin at uh, Cleveland Clinic Foundation is the head of the, this is the 12th annual Minority Men's Health Fair. And it's gotten so big that now they're having to address females, women, somewhat. But this is really directed initially toward minority men who don't seem to have the same uh, health care care and who maybe not are as um, aware of health care opportunities. So this day is a free event where on the April 24th, and we'll announce it again, the 12th Annual Minority Men's Health Fair. Do you know Charles Moffitt? Yes, he's yes. a good friend. Charles was at the uh, performance of ceremonies at Dark Old Men last Sunday. Okay, yes. And he thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, Charles is a wonderful, wonderful physician. Yes. And, community, and yes. community activist. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, I believe he's a, a transplant surgeon. A heart, it's either heart transplant yeah. or something like that. Yeah. So, uh, but he, this is his uh, brainchild, and given the disparities that exist uh, in healthcare outcomes and in access to healthcare uh, for African American and Latino men vis a vis mm -hmm. the European American uh, peers, these kind of efforts are absolutely essential yeah. because when you look at healthcare outcomes, in, in virtually every area when it comes to mortality and morbidity, African-American males, Latino males, and Native American males yes. are at the bottom of the, the pecking order. Total, uh, uh, total yeah. hole, so to speak. Uh, that's a good yeah, so we uh, double, hope, double entendre there, nice yeah. metaphor. And this is a free community event, the 12th Annual Minority Men's Health Fair. And it is 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. Oh, I thought they had extended it because it's so hard to get everybody through there for the screenings, uh, April 24th, but such things. And women, 
hate to say it this way, but get your men there if they are not proactive about it because there are all kind of screenings and fun events, uh, screenings for blood pressure, body mass index, bone density, cholesterol, diabetes, so they're all kind of uh, opportunities, heart disease. Kinds of things that mm -hmm. minority men fall prey to in yes. much higher numbers and higher incidence than, uh, again, their European American contemporaries. Right, yeah. so we'll yeah. talk about this again because Charles couldn't make it to the show tonight, but I promised him we would promote uh, his minority men's health fair. We certainly want to promote Rainey Institute's free performance of These Walls Don't Talk on Friday, March 21st at 5.30 and Saturday, March 22nd at 7 p.m. To find out more information, call Rainey at 881-1866 for any information. They got a lot going on there too. Okay, James, and we were going to wrap up on your information, a community service announcement, as it were. Yes. Um, you know, I've attended this um, Minority Men's uh, Health Fair. And you um, also do patient um, I do work. something. Yeah, I do <laughs> work as a standardized patient. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'll be doing uh, some work next week. In fact, I've got, uh, I'll be doing about 10 days worth over the next um, month or so. Wow. And, um, and that's another interesting opportunity for actors. Oh, it really is, yeah, because first of all, steady work and it, pay, it pays it pays pretty well. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, the thing that I wanted to bring up was the fact that so many people feel like, well, I can't afford to go to the doctor. I don't have health care. Mm -hmm. Well, now we have um, the Affordable Care Act. And Whether you subscribe to it or not, it's another resource for folks who are not well covered by health care. That's exactly yes. right. And um, one of the things that, uh, that happens sometimes is people experience illnesses, health crises that seem to come out of the blue. Um, and I guess I'll leave it at that in terms of, <laughs> you know, how that can happen. Yes. But um, just to say we all have experience with yes. that in our own family. Yes. 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 And now we all are cases of been there, done that. Uh -huh. Yeah. And so if you're thinking, well, I, I can't afford health care. First of all, I've gone to this uh, health fair. It's a terrific, terrific uh, thing. I've gone actually for the last three years. Okay. Because until this past year, I did not have health insurance. Yes. And I do now. It's, it's a long story. I had it. Then I didn't it have happened. it. Now, because of the Affordable Care Act, I, I was have without health care myself for a year. Okay. I remember playing basketball, and uh, and after a certain collision, I didn't think I thought I had done something to my knee. Fortunately, I hadn't, but that that's, would have been disastrous. That's right. When people say they can't afford health care, well, you can't afford or not to have it. That's exactly yes. right. And, and especially, as James is saying, it's accessible now. That's right. Yes. And it's affordable now. It's very affordable. The Affordable Health Care Act. That's the key word. And young and operative people, word my gosh, young people, I, I, can't, I can't emphasize this enough. Um, at, at my work this past week, I've run into two kids ages 20 and younger, one of whom developed pancreatitis. Um, and he's from Los Angeles. Yes, he had health care. We had another kid who uh, was trampolining. Case Western Reserve student fell and broke his neck. Basically, had the same surgery that Peyton Manning had to have. Now, can you imagine? And he had health insurance. But these are two Case Western Reserve students. Their parents make sure that they are insured. Well, in our communities, young people can sign up. If your income is, let's say, you're making less than thirty thousand dollars a year, guess what? There's health care available health care plan yes. for you. because there are subsidies available. And the young people feel invulnerable until trampolining accidents and basketball accidents. With, and you know, it only takes one trip in an ambulance with a, a, a twisted knee to end up multiple thousands Ooh. of dollars Ooh. in debt. Absolutely. And so I just uh, wanted to encourage especially young people and parents of young people who may feel that they can't get health insurance for their children, their families. Look into it. Again, it's without regard to, you know, politics or, or any of that. Yeah. It's if you don't have 
health insurance, go on to the uh, healthcare.gov site, at least check it out, see what's available. You may be surprised at how affordable it is. And I think it's important to point out that the that the website is working now. Working beautifully. <laughs> People are signing up That's easily. Right. I signed up through it myself. So don't be dissuaded or discouraged because of earlier problems and kinks in the system. Yeah. Those glitches. have been worked, those glitches been have been fixed. worked out. That's right. And speaking of worked out, Lester is pacing. I'm sure the Caramu folks will be pacing. Lord knows Miss Vicky, our play our invisible playwright over there is wondering will we ever wrap this up. Uh, she's our most invisible star. Okay, she's like a, a Nova, she shoots across, that's it. But we got lots of good stuff for Vicki, our playwright coming up too this year that we will be announcing and celebrating yes, and performing. Will. Yes, yes, we will. Yes, okay, so we wanna thank Lester uh, again for all of your videography and editing to make us look wonderful, darling. We want to thank, of course, Peter Lawson Jones and all of the things that he's involved in to help to help promote his own acting career, but above all, what he's doing in his role to help revitalize, rejuvenate, refresh, all that good stuff that Caramu is once again becoming known for. And we hope that our little show, Wake Up and Live with the Arts, is uh, in its own way helping to showcase, promote Caramu, and yes, I too belong to the Caramu Alumni Association, and hopefully what Lester and I do uh, will help further the, the information yeah, and special yeah, events yes. and everything that's going on that our community needs to know about. So till next time, what we always tend to say at the end of each show is wake, wake up, up and, and live with the arts, arts every, every day. day. Thanks a lot, folks. See you soon.